St. Germain's Discourse 54. San Francisco, California February 13, 1937. After our experience of more than two years, in the earnest endeavor to convey to you the understanding of the mighty I am presence, which is your freedom, it is most gratifying indeed, O oh, beloved ones. To see the expansion of the light within your hearts and of all the students throughout America and the world. Again, I say, it is most gratifying to find those books have found their way into all parts of the world, carrying their light and their freedom to all points of the globe. We have been with you during the past ten days, and have with the greatest of joy felt the loving response within your hearts. We too rejoice exceedingly. I say this that you may know it is only the beginning of the great joy, the great light, the great freedom which is yours. So many have entered into it sufficiently to know there is really no limit to that which they may attain. I say to you tonight, and I try to put into it all the love of my being. I congratulate you blessed ones in San Francisco on the expansion of your light, in spite of the seeming chaos which at times seemed to be in your midst. Yet, steadily and surely. 46. Have you gone forward, in the greater and greater expansion and perfection of your presence of life, which is your mighty I am? In your future work here, precious ones, remember that we are always pouring forth our radiance to you, where there is harmony, but we cannot do it where there is not. To those who refuse to give obedience to the simple things we ask, we cannot give our radiance, for without obedience nothing can be accomplished. Furthermore, we will not release great volumes of energy into the use of anyone unless we are sure they will not requalify it with anger, criticism, hatred, or any of those qualities which are destructive. One day you shall know how great our love is for you, and how earnestly we watch to guard everywhere. When the beloved messengers are prompted to warn and guard you, please do not feel that they are interfering with your free will at any time. Such is not the case, but as messengers they must convey the truth. Always just remember, their love is very, very great for you, and they will stand by always to give assistance. Oh, beloved ones of the light, your very heartbeat is a throb of delight from your mighty I am presence, giving you life. 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 More and more, and more life. As you gain in your understanding and feel your authority to call forth this great intelligent energy from your mighty. 48 Ascended Master Discourses I am presence, watch will stand guard. That you do not requalify it. I am sure in this class, as never before, you feel the greater and greater reality of this privilege which is yours in receiving from your, mighty I am presence, its limitless intelligence, limitless energy, and greater and greater strength, more and more perfect health. I say to you with full assurance that no one can fail if he has understood refusing acceptance of discordant appearances and conditions, and will earnestly call the, presence, into action. All must have perfect health. It is the law of your being, precious ones, no matter what the conditions are, what the X-ray shows in anyone's body. The presence releases those mighty currents of energy in and through the body and sweeps out every imperfection that is there. Will you accept it? Will you believe it? Let the power flow through to bring you perfect health, it is essential. If you are constantly harassed by the feeling of pain and distress in the body, you cannot give your fullest attention to the presence so that it releases the greatest volume. Therefore, sometimes one needs encouragement or strength, and I trust there is no, I am, student who comes under this radiation that will not willingly, joyously give that. I say to all of you, beloved students, never allow yourselves to be impatient with those who come to you for advice or help. Do not ever answer them impatiently, and do not ever refuse help. Do not ever say to one who comes to you, you have an I am presence why do you not stand by it? That would be unkind. You do not know the forces playing upon that one which might have discouraged him. Instead, place your hand about that one's shoulder and say, my brother, or my sister, my hand is in yours in the strength of my, mighty I am presence, until you have won your victory. Go forth, call your, mighty I am presence into action and I will help you. Send them forth feeling that you are interested in their victory. We must know all that is going on, precious hearts, in your lives. Do you know that? Having entered into the radiance of your, mighty I am presence, in this knowledge which I have brought forth, you invite us to observe your world, otherwise we cannot help. 
therefore, if we see you are impatient, we try to pour forth the radiation of kindliness which will give you patience and strength to assist. Do not ever say anything or allow a feeling to go forth that would be discouraging. Remember allow no one to come into your midst, individually or collectively, who breathes a word of discord or condemnation of this work. If you do, you will close the door. We do not wish you to do that, but we cannot prevent you, for everyone under. 50 Ascended This radiation is wholly given his free will to choose, and always shall. We, with all the love and joy of our hearts, want to give you freedom, but you must make your call to your mighty I am presence, and stand by it. Then you give us the opportunity to, through your mighty I am presence, intensify all activities, until you have the courage, strength, and power to resist all outer suggestions which would deprive you or detain you from your full victory. Will you not stand so firm by your mighty I am presence and in it, that we can always give the assistance required, whether it is health, strength, courage, or directing intelligence? I say to you, all of you precious ones here, please do not accept that you cannot receive clear directing intelligence from your presence. I have a great reason for saying this to you. There have been quite a number of students who yet do not feel that they can call their presence into action and receive the direction clear enough to be sure. Now, precious ones, that is only because knowingly or unknowingly there has been some anxiety within you which has been disturbing you, disturbing the vibratory action of your being or your nervous system. Therefore, if you will be still and say to your presence, colon, mighty I am presence. You help me to be still, so that your directing, intelligent energy can get through, make me understand, through my feeling or in some manner, make me feel clearly what I should do. As you do this, you will find in some manner directly what is the thing to do, but watch out be sure you do not, in the feeling, first begin to doubt that you are going to have the directing intelligence from your, I am presence. If you do, you start that vibratory action which is discouraging, through your feelings, before you actually know it in the intellect. That feeling of yours is rather an unruly fellow, but you can govern it, the presence will. This time in the class, oh, precious ones, so much has been accomplished. I rejoice with all my heart and I congratulate you. You will find that you will all go forth in such a great calm confidence and victory from tonight, as you have not thought possible to be attained in your outer activity. We have offered to hold your hands until the victory. May we not do it. May we not hold your hands until you are free, wholly free from all limitations, feeling clearly, powerfully, definitely your victory? We shall be so happy to do it, always through the radiation of your wondrous presence. Do you not understand that we, as ascended beings, are one with the mighty I am presence of you who are not yet ascended, and that is how we must know all about you in order to give you the assistance which is necessary? 52 Ascended Master Discourse It is so very wonderful, you must get my feeling I with such rejoicing, I see how you have become able to still yourselves. In this class such a radiance has poured forth, although you are not yet aware of it, but in a small way. Do you think, precious ones, that the Divine Director would have come here in your midst, pouring forth these great currents of energy into your minds and bodies, if he had not seen that you were able to still yourselves enough to have the full benefit of it? His great wisdom would not do that unless it was time, was right, was permanent. So I congratulate you of San Francisco and those visiting here, that you called your mighty I am presence, into action which made the way open and clear for you to be here. That in itself is a great victory. I wish you might see in the atmosphere of mankind how many blessed ones have momentarily had good intent, but been sidetracked from the radiation by some vicious suggestion. If you saw the number who had been turned aside from this class by the vicious suggestion from others, in which there was no truth, you would be surprised. If that had not been the case, this lovely, blessed place could not nearly have held them. The tragedy is theirs. You who have had the strength to come in spite of all opposition, have the victory. Oh, that all mankind might understand how all progress is due to their own initiative. You must. Choose, precious ones. I speak to all mankind, into their mental and feeling world, you not only must, but you are compelled to choose, before the greater energy and power will be released to come into your world and produce the perfection which you wish. If you are sitting on the fence, you will not get much help, 
but when you straighten up your spine and say, Mighty I am presence. I am 100% or 1000% with you. Release your mighty powers into action to free me and my world, do you think for one moment that its energy will not come forth? Let me tell you it will, and with no uncertainty. But if there is wavering in your consciousness and doubt, do you not see that is requalifying the energy, and it cannot do for you what it should and what you would like to have it do? Now many times those things are acting in the feeling of mankind, mostly unconsciously. The individual is not outwardly aware of it, but if you will call your presence into action, it will correct the condition. I say to those who have been here for the first time, it does not matter what your doubts might be, if you would call your presence into action three times daily, earnestly, for five minutes. Inside of ten days you would have the evidence in your own experience so strong that nothing could turn you aside. The condition is, owing to the mass creation about mankind, that those who are not anchored, unknowingly listen. 54. To the faucet about them, which even turns them temporarily aside. Will you not explain this, oh, precious students, to those you contact who are partially interested? Because mankind does not understand the laws and forces acting upon them, they are often deprived of the great freedom, joy, and blessing which is waiting for them. The radiance in the class has surpassed anything so far, and I want you precious ones to know that. In the fullness of my love I say to you, if you wish us to come twice a year, this year and next, we will come to you. I say for your blessing and freedom, do not be worried about anything injuring this work. All the vicious gossip there is, does not amount to anything. Those unfortunate individuals are, but destroying themselves. They are not injuring you or this work, they cannot do it. But the pitiful thing is that they still think they can. I want to say to our blessed friends, the Christian scientists, in their churches, I am amazed that people who pretend to pour forth love, would turn in viciousness against this love, this radiation of the light and the understanding of the, mighty I am presence, which is the source of all life. This is the first time I have spoken my opinion, but I say today, and you may carry my word to them, it is pitiful. I tell you frankly, and you may carry this to all Christian science churches throughout America and the world, unless they stop that, they will destroy every church and its attendance which they now have. I say this in all love and kindness. I wish to stop such a thing coming on, for great good has been accomplished through Christian science, but I tell you frankly, every source, whether it is unity, Christian science, or whatever it is, that attempts to bring disgrace upon this work or condemns or criticizes it, will fail utterly and their churches will be empty till this work opposes nothing in the world. It goes on presenting this wondrous presence, the mighty I am, which every human being on earth should be delighted to know about and understand, and because they have allowed suggestions to enter their ranks and fear that this would empty their churches. They have turned in many instances in vicious hatred to the messengers and this work. God alone pity themal unity has done the same thing, through the claw of the sinister force which has entered into their heart center. I say this to you in all kindness, dear hearts. Watch I every source that has presented some part of the truth which condemns this work, will fail utterly, because the messengers have never condemned any activity and never shall. They have presented this mighty law of the, I am presence, in their humble kindness, and if people do not wish to come into this mighty truth of the, I am, they. 56 Ascended. Should not condemn it. I stated in the shrine class that the messengers have carried forth bravely thus far and, by their powerful, dynamic application have held their own protection and carried the work forth. Now then, we shall fight their battles and they shall hold their peace. I marvel at the individuals among mankind who are too stubborn to believe the mighty truths recorded in unveiled mysteries, and the magic presence. We never, an ascended being will never, use a destructive force, but mark what I tell you, as described in unveiled mysteries, the mighty host of ascended masters draw the wall of light, and when the viciousness of the individual strikes it, their own viciousness rebounds upon them and they must handle it, if they can. That is the law of everyone's being. We do not wish to harm anyone, but we shall not allow the messengers to be harmed, nor this work I when those within humanity have been willingly strong enough to carry forth to a certain point, then the great law sweeps in and takes a hand. So I say to you, precious ones, we love the Christian scientists, we love all unity, we love all mankind but the viciousness that comes in their ranks shall not harm these loved ones. 
neither shall it harm the students of the light. I say to you, beloved Cora Wickham, here in San Francisco, my hand is in yours for your firm, unyielding. Stand in bringing the light of the mighty I am presence to your friends, the Christian scientists. One day you will not be able to care for them all, so many will come. Your loving heart and kindness will render a transcendent service and are rendering it. Every blessed one of the students here and group leaders, I enfold you in my love, but do not feel inharmonious to each other. Whenever a feeling of discord or inharmony comes from one student to another or from one group to the other, remember, you can always know instantly it is but a claw of the sinister force driving in, trying to destroy the great good you are doing. Now you will notice, precious ones, the messengers fear nothing. They are wholly unconcerned about all this silly criticism and falsehood, which is spread by individuals because they are not permitted to drive into this heart center of light. I want you to understand here in San Francisco, you blessed ones, that we are back of you, the great host of ascended masters, and one day, you will know that we are even more real than you are. One day you will know that we are not an imagination of this good brother. You will find that we are very real, and we can be very tangible, but yet still invisible. Do not forget that some of these people who have tried to claim and prove discrepancies in those marvelous books will one day cry out for mercy. Mark what I tell you. We bide. 58 Ascent. Our time, but mark what I tell you. We spread it to the world, no person, place, or thing shall ever harm or destroy this work. It shall go on, until every one of mankind knows this, mighty I am presence, and through it, all have their freedom. I say this to you tonight for your strength, courage, power, and freedom. To us, the silly falsehood, condemnation, and criticism is silly nonsense and has no power. Remember, precious ones, to every appearance that is less than the perfection of the presence, say, you have no power. Mean it in your feelings, and you will have no trouble entering your world or disturbing you. It is true, absolutely true, the appearances or discordant forces in mankind have no power, except the thought and feeling which goes into them and feeds them with the life of the individual. Look, precious ones, in your recent airplane accidents. Do you not see that from everything which has such an appearance, a momentum goes forth? If it had not been for the decrees which the blessed students of America have given, that thing would have gained a momentum, until a dozen or more planes would have been destroyed. The sinister force wants just such a thing to start so mankind may not be in close contact. I thank the messengers and the students for issuing the decrees to protect the radio, because there has been a deliberate attempt which would try to interfere with the radio in America and the world but it shall not do it. I tell you, my precious ones, in your mighty decrees giving this protection for various activities, you are rendering a service that will go down through eternity. Then one day, when you are farther progressed in your life, you will see the service rendered and the great intense protection which has been given America and the great industries. Precious ones, you have no idea how those marvelous decrees have gone forth to solve these conditions of strikes throughout America. Go on with your decrees. Call the mighty presence into action that they may never have another strike. Call divine justice to take place between the men and capital, between so-called labor and capital. There is no labor. There is only one thing, a divine service. Beloved ones, please feel this in your outer activity of the world, and you will release yourselves from the feeling of labor or bondage. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you are serving this great, I am presence, to your freedom. Try to feel this, and let it take from you all feeling of being in the bondage of labor. You heard what Mrs. Ballard, our beloved messenger, read you tonight of my activities, which are rather the directing of great currents of great forces and energy than taking any part in the political activity. So it is. But America shall go forward. All official places shall be filled with the power of divine justice, and great harmonious activity shall enter into. 60 Ascended Master America and hold its dominion here. Mark what I tell you do not, I plead with you, longer give power to appearances of anything, whether it is in the government or your individual lives. Say to every appearance, you have no power. Mighty I am present sweep into it. Produce your perfection and hold your dominion there, your mighty directing intelligence. 
my precious ones, you can render a service unparalleled in the history of the world. Will you not do it for your freedom and the freedom of mankind? I rejoice in the strength and power which is coming within many of the students, that strength drawn of the acceptance of the mighty I am presence, which makes them a mighty pillar of light, moving through the world and spreading its radiance everywhere. So I congratulate every earnest student throughout America and the world. I pour forth a mighty radiance to them for strength, courage, and power to go forward victorious in whatever their choice of activity is, that they may fill the world with the beauty, harmony, and the glory of the mighty I am presence in action. In the fullness of my love I enfold you, O oh, beloved students, with my courage, with my strength, with my perfect health, filling your minds and bodies until there is not a vestige of anything but love and harmony there, if you will allow me. We have now gone into the heart of the mighty I am presence, the ruler of the universal let us abide there and let its heart act through these humble forms, that they may become electrified into the fullness of the conquering presence of the mighty I am. Stand forth in its great calm serenity, realizing, feeling that God, the mighty I am presence, is henceforth their director, their victory in whatever choice their service might be. Great divine, great divine director,